In this code demonstration, we're going to take a look at the max and min functions provided by the underscore JS code library. In order to make use of these functions, we actually have to include the underscore JS code library in our web page. Now, I've done this by referencing it from a popular CDN, but you can also download it to your local website and reference it from your local web server as well. Now basically the max and min functions basically allow, allow us to find the maximum or minimum value of something within an array or a collection. Uh, we can use it with simple values or we can actually use it with objects. So to get started here I'm going to do console.log and I'm going to call underscore.max and I'm going to pass into it an array. So in our array we're going to have one, two, three, and four. Now when this runs, this should find the maximum value, which in this case will be the number four. So I'm gonna reload our web page here, and we're gonna see that four is outputted to the console. So now, let's take a look at min. Min does basically the opposite. It's gonna find the minimum value. So do min on the same array, and it should output one. And there we go, we have the value of one. So it's pretty easy from looking from that standpoint how this actually works. Now, what's interesting is let's pass in an empty array and let's see what we get back for a response. We'll do max, we'll have nothing in our array, and we'll reload this. And you may, you may be surprised to see that it's negative infinity. Now, the reason why the answer is negative infinity is that because there's nothing in our array, whatever value we were to add to the array would automatically be the maximum value. Therefore, the only value that's less than any other value is negative infinity. So basically, it comes back with negative infinity, but if we were to put any new value in the array, then that number would be greater than negative infinity, and because it's the only value in the array, that would be the maximum value. We see the same thing when we work with min. But instead of it being negative infinity, it, becomes, it comes back as positive infinity, because positive infinity is greater than any number that could be added to the array. Any number that's added to the array will become the new minimum value. Okay, so having the ability to find the max and min within an array is interesting and useful, but you can actually do a lot more with it than just that. So let's take a look here at a table that we have in our HTML code. We have a simple table of people. So we'll remove the comments and let's jump back to the web browser and reload it. Now we, what we want to do in this table is we want to look for the oldest person who is Phil Lee at 47. But we also want to be able to find the youngest person, Trey Jones, who is 26. So to do that, I have a couple of helper functions here. I'm going to use this get all rows function to basically get me all of the table rows out of the, uh, out of the DOM uh, that have people in them so that we can actually loop over, iterate over those table rows to find the maximum and the minimum age. So I'm going to come up here and I'm going to say var rows equal to get all rows. All right. And then I'm going to say var row max age equal to underscore dot max and then I'm going to pass in my rows. And then I'm going to create this iterative function. This iterative function is basically going to execute over each row in our collection of rows and is used to actually retrieve the value that we want to use for the purposes of determining the max or min. In this case, we're looking for the max. Now down here, I have a helper function called getAge. And you're going to see it accepts three parameters. We're only really using the first one, but I want to show you all three parameters that you can make use of. So the first parameter is row. So this represents the actual row that we're iterating over at the moment. Then we have index, and this is the index value of the row that we're iterating over. And then finally, we have the actual entire original array of rows that's being passed in here. So I'm going to grab my get age. I'm going to pass that into that function right there. And then I'm going to say console.log row max age dot enter HTML. When we run this, we're going to find that it's going to find the oldest person in the list and output that HTML to our console. So we'll reload. 
And there we go. Phil Lee, 47, from San Diego. So basically what this did was this found all the TR elements, and we got back this, this collection of table rows. We iterate over them, and then within each table row, we identify the column or the, the, the appropriate node that has our age content. We convert it to an integer, and then it finds that max age. And we can do the same thing here with min. So we'll just copy this and say row min age and we'll change this to min and we'll change that to min and then we'll reload and we're going to see that we get a min age here of 26 for Trey Jones. So as you can see the ability to use these max and min functions not just on simple arrays but also collections of objects and being able to iterate over those objects and pull out the value that you actually want to do the max min comparison on um, really makes these functions really useful for, for working with data. And uh, just like the rest of the underscore library, especially for collections and arrays, just a lot of really useful functions that make working with that data so much easier.